Uh, hey, wow, uh, Tears of the Friends Wood, uh, your green uh, bush uh, speaking here, Chili Dragoon, let's get right into it. Um, what an introduction. Wow, it's uh, early in the morning. Um, let's have some coffee. Okay, so today's episode is actually very exciting. It's fundamentals of an exciting concept. Today we are talking about file I.O. So I.O. stands in tech for input output. So it means like reading and writing to files on your disk. Um, yeah, for example, well, there are different types of files. Um, usually they are divided in uh, plain text files and binary files. Uh, we are going to look at plain text files today, so that's the format that you know on um, Windows, for example, uh, that's ending with a .txt um, and is not too confused actually with the rich text format that is pretty common on Mac. I think that one is binary actually, not sure, because it has like plain text has no other features than text. So there's no such thing as text formatting with like bold text. There's no colored text. Um, there's no font type. There's no font size. It's just text. Um, right. So also our code base is written in plain text and the colors that we see are done by our editor. If uh, you were to open the code with another text editor that is not uh, supporting code syntax highlighting. There's no information about the text color. Okay, I don't know why I dove that deep, deeply into um, plain text versus binary, um, but whatever. Uh, also, by the way, like word files are definitely not plain text files. That's some um, uh, word document format like ODT, PDF, I don't know. I don't do Office, whatever. Um, Anyways, so today we are going to look into file I.O. Um, yeah, as I said, I.O. is a common term. That's also having an influence on the high price of .io domains. I don't know if you know any I.O. domain like Slither I.O., what you cool kids play nowadays. Or is it, is it already out again? I don't know, whatever. So um, tech companies like to flex that they know what I.O. means and that's why they buy I.O. domains. It also has other reasons, but that's one uh, influence on the high popularity and price of .io domains. Today you learn something useless. Nice. Um, cool. So reading and writing files, why would you care? Um, it is really nice if you want to do one of the following things. I mean, the best example would be you want to build an account system where you can save user state, you can give them some levels, XP, whatever, and um, load that data again uh, when the player reconnects and save it across server restarts. That, uh, that's where File.io can help you a lot. Um, you can also use like database stuff, but file, uh, plain text files is definitely one way to do it. Um, another use case, maybe you want to implement the feature that uh, the server's configs are not saved if you um, if you change them in-game. So if you go uh, in the recon console and change a setting and restart the server, it won't be persisted, uh, as opposed to the client where that's the case. So if you want to change that, you also have to work with I.O. Uh, maybe not that in depth, but whatever. Okay, that's a very long introduction, four minutes already. Okay, cool. So let's get right into it. And how are we going to tackle this problem? Um, you always, if you implement something in keywords, as I said already, think about was it implemented already and used existing code. That's um, for compatibility reasons, uh, for simplicity, um, and also for good style. Use what's there already. Don't duplicate code, don't build it your own way. Okay, so think about it. Do we have any file IO in keywords? Um, I can think of two cases right now, actually, uh, one of them being the client side config, which is definitely loaded on client boot and written on client um, uh, client exit. Like if you close your client, the config will be saved. 
Another um, file I/O would be logging, but that's a bit more complex, I'd say. So let's have a look at the um, auto exec loading and saving code. Um, how do we find that? Do you have any idea how we are going to find the code that um, saves or loads the config? If not, then I will tell you. So let's open the code and open your favorite search tool like Control shift f to search the whole source code. And I assume that somewhere in the code where the config is being saved or loaded, the string auto exec dot CFG, uh, CFG uh, will be used. So let's search for that auto exec dot CFG. Um, if you ever touched, uh, touched your settings file, you know that's, um, yeah, that's how it looks like. Uh, that's its name, I meant. <clears throat> okay, so we have it on the server and the client side. Let's go wherever, client. It doesn't really matter since they share the code. Um, okay, so execute file, bloody blah, blah, blah. This doesn't look like file loading. So control click execute file. And here we are. That's um, the file reading code. Um, try not to get intimidated by it. Uh, I've seen it many times. I know which parts are the interesting ones. So in this line, we are opening the file and we are using a pointer to storage, which is like some interfi interface defined uh, in storage.h by the tables code. And it has like some um, storage related uh, methods in here, uh, which can also do like listing directories, uh, deleting files, creating folders and stuff like that. So we want to use that. Um, so let's close that and go back here. So this part seems to be interesting. That gives us a file handle. So if you open a file, you get a file handle back, which you can then use to work with the file, like read it and write it and stuff like that. Okay, how are we going to open the file? Uh, the method open file takes these arguments, the first one being the file name, the second one being flags. You can open files in different modes. You can open files for reading, you can open files for writing, and you can open files for appending. So um, there's not, m not much else you can do. So for example, if you want to edit a specific line of a text file, there's no like native support for that, so to say. So the way you do it is you delete the whole file and rewrite it differently with that one line changed. So that's the only ways you can uh, work with a file. You can read it, you can write it, you can append. You cannot like edit, um, if that makes any sense. And the another, um, other parameter is I storage type all. I actually didn't look into what that means. Let me do it right now. I still don't know what it means. Okay, cool. So such prepared uh, video. If you don't know what something means, uh, usually it's fine to copy it. So those two parameters are uh, definitely more important. Um, and then we have another uh, few optional parameters followed so we can safely ignore those as well. Okay, so this gives us the file handle. And then down here, we check if the file handle exists or if it's like uh, null. For example, if it failed to open the file, then this variable will be filled with null or false or whatever. I don't know, some, something that's false in the if statement. And then this code um, won't be executed. So then if it's false, this code will be executed, the else statement. So if the file is opened successfully, or, um, execute this code. If not, do this. You always want to do that because like working with files can always fail. Uh, the file could have um, some issues. Maybe you have missing permissions to read the file on your operating system. Maybe the file is not existing. Maybe the file is on a different path, which is pretty much not existing. Um, yeah, stuff like that. Um, right, or maybe someone else is already working with the file and you have like some conflicts of two processes uh, touching one file that can also work, uh, can also happen. Okay, that's why you always want to make this check. Hey, did it um, work or not? 
and if it doesn't work we have like a tons of lines here yelling at us that something didn't work um, oh that's actually Heinrich trying to be helpful with uh, storage paths okay whatever anyways um, so that's that and then in here we have the actual um, reading code cool so let's try to um, copy that code somewhere else and try to modify it a bit so that we can run it uh, where do we want to do some file loading? I suggest to put it, it doesn't matter if it's client or server, I will just put it in the server now for simplicity so that we don't have to launch the client every time since it's, it takes a bit longer to launch a client than a server. Um, okay, cool. So um, I'd say let's do something useless here and read a file every time the server is being booted, like in the beginning, so that we don't have to execute any commands and it's directly running our code. So a good place for that would be server.cpp, which is like the entry file for the server. It's under engine server server.cpp. I think we have an int main in here and even a method called run. Yes. So um, I suggest putting code into the run method because if you know basic C or C++, you know that the uh, function int main is something special. That's the entry point of the program. So that's the first uh, function that will be executed, uh, which is a bit early because we also want to do some setup uh, before. So the storage, set, uh, the storage system is properly set up. So I recommend if you want to do something on server start, or on client start, don't do it in the int main, do it in the run method, which then has everything initialized already. And we can see it's still initializing stuff here, initializing, 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 blah, blah, blah printing the recon password. And here is where we're starting the game. And this is the um, main game loop. Well, let's not dive too deeply into the concept of this. That's not about file or but um, the, the game loop is an important thing and that's running all the time and um, we want to put our code directly before the game loop because then we know everything is properly set up before the game loop starts because that's when it's running if we were to put it inside of the game loop then it would read our file every tick which would be um, a lot of times and that's just annoying let's just read it once and see how that works okay so um, before starting the game, before the big while loop, after initializing all the stuff in our run function, we want to put some code um, just for testing purposes. I think it's a good place to put some code that we want to test. Okay, so now let's steal some code, try to understand it and have a look. Okay, so we definitely need this line here. That's opening the file. Let's copy that over here. Uh, maybe splitting doesn't work with that size. That's a bit. Uh, that's a bit big. Okay. And we can see this line is already um, highlighted by VS Code that something is off here because we are using the variable p file name, which is defined in console.cpp. Um, it's the argument to the uh, function, and we don't have it over here. So let's replace that by something that exists and we can just hard code in some string. So we are um, opening the file, I don't know, let's call it foo.txt. Um, so you can think of anything, um, just make sure that this file then exists. And we want to open it for reading, that's fine. Uh, I still don't know what that means, whatever. Okay, so this should give us a valid file handle. Let's see if this line compiles, if not then uh, Maybe we should have a look at it closer. Okay, so let's try to build that. And we get a warning, unused variable. That's to expect it because we define the file variable but we never use it. That's a useful warning because if you think your code is finished and you have a unused variable, something is probably wrong. Okay, cool. Uh, but our code is not finished, so that's fine. Right, then steal another line of code so the next thing that we want to do is check if the file opening worked. So we have this if file um, thing here. So we want to do the same. Um, 
let me do it the other way around just to confuse you so we do a if exclamation mark file so if the file does not um, exist or like if it failed to open then we want to uh, do something like uh, print a message dbg underscore message and say um, uh, failed to open file food or txt you can write whatever in here just to notify the server administrator that it failed to open the file okay so let's see if we can get the output of that already so let's run the server um can you see it i can see it wonderful here fail to open the file foo.txt wonderful so that means that it didn't find the file foo.txt and that's why we get this error message so far so expected um, let's try to create the file and see if the error message goes away uh, do you still see it i don't yeah so now it's fixed wonderful um yeah me using the touch command to create a file i hope that's not too confusing you can also go like uh, in your um, thing and do like i don't know how to do op uh, how to create a file via the um, graphical user interface on gnome but on windows you can just right click and create a new text file and call it foo.txt make sure to show the extensions so that you don't get foo.txt.txt um, yes all right um, cool wonderful um, so how does it know that the file is in my current directory and that's um, TWIS magic actually what button did I press now okay wonderful um, so I don't know if you know about the multiple TWIS directories and the storage um, file but you have multiple directories uh, where files could be located when working with the TWIS server or client um, and this storage code will handle it for you so if you start the server let me scroll up here it should um, yeah it should display it here so when you initialize the storage uh, it will print out when starting the server this stuff here so we have the user here which is in my home folder and then dot words on windows that's um, in app data roaming so that's your central um, TWORLDS folder which is shared by like all clients and servers that's like one fixed place on Mac it's like in a library applications uh, data whatever oh I didn't use Mac in a while but you probably know which folder I'm talking about and then we have the data directory which is the local path depending from where I launched the um, client so next to the client or the server there could be a folder called data and that's where it looks in for um, resources like game skins and stuff like that and then we have the current directory from which we launch the client or server again but this time a absolute path to it so we are currently on my desktop in the folder git tworlds and then in the build directory so it also will look in the current directory um, for files. So for example, um, when we try to read the foo file, it looks in the current directory. And if, if it doesn't find it in the current directory, if we were to put it in the user directory, so into app data, it would find it there. So it goes uh, through there, it has some priorities. Um, I think it's actually this order. Um, so yeah keep that in mind you can use multiple uh, places to put your files and you can also customize that via the storage.cfg file but i'm trying to not go into too many different topics today uh, so that's something for another day i guess anyways so if we put a file directly next to where we launch the server or client then it will find it if we use the storage code or if we put it into the central app data 
um, user directory, it will also find it. Okay, so far so good. Um, then let's continue. Uh, when it fails to open the file, then we print some error message and otherwise we want to actually read its content. Um, okay, then we can just copy this whole code and put it in here. Yeah, stealing code is totally fine. Try to read it and understand it and uh, check the error messages. So over here we have identifier C line reader is undefined. Okay, that means we are using a variable type or like it's a class actually that we never defined. And that means that in here this data type is defined but in the server it's not. And that's usually a issue of missing includes. And we can see here in the beginning of console.cpp we include linereader.h. Okay, um, and there's a different as a difference of including, you have the one with the less than and the one with the quotes. The one with the less than is like an absolute path starting from the root of the source directory and the one with the quotes is a relative path. So we know that line reader is in the same folder at, as console.cpp. It's an engine shared uh, line reader. So if we open the file browser here we are in this uh, shared folder, we have uh, the console, which we are in right now, and next to it down here, we have the line reader. But we are on the server, which is a different folder, so we can't do include line reader in uh, single quotes here, because it's not in this folder. That's why we have to use a absolute path to engine shared and then line reader. Okay, so let's put it in here include an engine engine shared line reader okay so go back to our run method and i hope the error message is now gone and it is you can see it's no longer throwing the error message that this is not uh, a data type okay next one um so let's have a look at those two. Um, at the same time, we're using a undefined method print and we're using the file name again, which we didn't define. And this, these two lines are just saying, hey, I'm executing this file. We don't want to do that anyways. Uh, we want to do it differently. So this has nothing to do with reading files. So we can actually delete that. And we can do something like write it ourselves using dbg underscore message and saying server and saying like loading file foo.txt instead. Wonderful. Okay, so um, then we successfully uh, created an instance of a line reader. The line reader is just some class provided by the T words code, and we have to call init and pass in a file handle which we created up here and then we can use the line reader to read lines out of the file and we do that by calling the line reader instance and call dot get on it so this so lr dot init will open the file and lr dot get will get us one line this will get us the next line and this will get us the next line. So the instance of the line reader will keep track of the state. So how many times did we call get? And that's why we can call get multiple times and get a new line every time. Okay. And how is this code used down here? We take the result of um, the get method, which is like a string um, of the current line and store it in the variable pline. So that's like a pointer to this line. And then we check if this is um, true or false. So in C++, everything is true, but zero, null, or false. So, okay, this is false, this is false, this is false. Actually, this is also false, but that's like modern stuff. And 
um, the C++ code base in uh, T-World is more like old school, so more like C style, that's those two are like um, a bit similar, but the null one is the old school, the null pointer is the new school one. Anyways, these values are all false and everything else is true. So uh, the number one is true, an empty string is true, the string uh, false is true, and um, whatever, minus one is also true. So everything is true, but these values, okay. So that means if we check p line, if it's if it's um, successfully loading anything out of the file, any content, then it's true. If lr dot get gives you nothing, that means the file is ended, and then it will return null, and then the while loop will abort. And then we have a single line uh, while loop here. So the single line body that's a bit hard to read maybe and execute lines like running the uh, command, which we don't want to do. We want to do something different. So let's delete that anyways and make it a body. So it's a bit easier to read. And then we do dbg underscore message and say like server and uh, data and we can do like data from file and dbg message supports like the format string so we can do percentage s and then provide the line in here so this line will be executed as many times as this condition is true and that's true for as many lines as there in the file so we go over this code um, we create a line reader, we open the file, then we read the first line, save it in a variable p line, then we check if p line is null. If it's null, that means that the file is empty or reached the end of the file. If that's the case, we abort and then we close the file. Otherwise, we execute this code and p line will hold the current line, then we are going to print it. Then we are going back to the while loop we check again, hey, what line do we get? We save it in the variable p line. We check, is that an empty line? Is that the end of the file? Uh, if yes, we are bored. If not, we are going to print the line. I hope that makes some sense. And at the end, we are calling IO close. So as you remember, IO stands for input output. Um, so that's like a method closing the file. That's good style to clean up your file handles because your operating system kind of remembers that your program is currently working with that file. If you don't close it properly, bad stuff can happen. So always close your files. Okay. Um, I think if the file didn't even open, you don't have to close it. Let's have a look at how, they bo how these boys did it over here. Um, where we steal it from here. So if it didn't open, they don't close it. And the t devs know what they are doing, so you don't have to close it as well. Okay, cool. But if you successfully open it, make sure to close it if you finished. So now, um, if we have some contents in the file, it should print the contents to the console. So let's quickly, um, whoops. Uh, edit the file and put some text in here. You can use any text editor. You can also use VS Code. I just like to use uh, Vim for like quickly open, opening and editing local files. Don't get confused by that. Uh, we type in foobar, bass in the new line and then last line and the last line, whatever. Uh, maybe we can also put an empty line a few times. That should also print. And then we close the file. So now if we look in the file, uh, I hope I'm totally not confusing you if I'm using the terminal here. So the cat command is essentially uh, printing out the file. We can also, let's let's do it a uh, graphical way. So if we now look into the foo.txt file, that's how it looks like, right? Um, okay, so now let's compile the server again. We do not get any warnings, that's very nice. And now we can run the server. And as we can see, it says loading file foo.txt and then we have the content. We have foobar 
best last line and then a few empty lines. Isn't that exciting? Um, yeah, so that has been a long ass video diving into a few different topics and only covering reading files. Um, yeah, but I hope it made some sense so far and you, you learned something new, right? See you next week.